Grignard reagents going to be the topic of this lesson, second on the synthesis of alcohol. So they are so important, I'm giving them their own lesson. So Grignard reagents are the equivalent of a carbanion. They allow us to make a new carbon-carbon bond, something that we don't have a whole lot of ways for doing. And, and the truth is, is the second major way you've learned, and this is probably, I'm, I'm going to put that go on a limb, one of the top two reactions you'll probably learn in all of organic chemistry, one of the more common ones you'll be tested on. Now this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. All right, so Grignard reagents. A Grignard reagent, simply put, is an organometallic, so where we actually have carbon bonded to a metal, which is not normal, right? So normally we think of carbon as being bonded to a bunch of non-metals for our organic molecules. In fact, in the last lesson we learned that you know, carbon has a, a variety of more electronegative atoms it might be bonded to, like oxygen or nitrogen or a halogen. But pretty much in a typical organic molecule, the only atom he's going to be bonded to that's less electronegative than him is a hydrogen. So however, we're going to learn about something highly reactive, not your typical organic molecule, highly reactive, when carbon's bonded to something even less electronegative than hydrogen, to a metal. And the Grignard react reagent, being an organometallic, has carbon bonded to a magnesium. Now, you'll also learn later on about organolithium reagents. So, but a Grignard reagent is an organomagnesium halide. And that halide is typically either chlorine, bromine, or iodine. It could be any one of the three. So this is an organo, um, this organomagnesium halide is what we call the Grignard reagent, and it carries out the Grignard reaction. And what you should realize here is that, you know, most of the time we're used to seeing carbon with a partial positive charge. But in this case, with this lovely polar bond right here, carbon's the more electronegative of the two atoms, and he's got a partially negative charge. So this is really unusual. In fact, this bond right here is between a metal and a non-metal. And back in Gen Chem, you learned that, oh, between a metal and a non-metal, that bond's ionic. Well, if we considered this bond to be ionic for a second, If we considered it to be ionic, those two electrons would be the more electronegative carbons, and you'd have a carbanion right here and a magnesium cation over here. So the Grignard reagent reacts a whole lot like it is an, a carbanion. That's how it's going to react. And a carbanion is both a strong base and a strong nucleophile. And the Grignard reagent is both a strong base and a strong nucleophile. Now, it turns out it's not a true carbanion. Again, you might have learned in Gen Chem, we gave you an oversimplification that the bond between a metal and a non-metal is always ionic. Well, turns out the, the, the key is that the difference in electronegativity has to be 1.7 or bigger. And unfortunately, the difference between carbon and magnesium is just slightly less than 1.7. And so typically, we actually consider this a covalent bond. Now, it's a very polar covalent bond, but considering it to be ionic is, is kind of a a faux pas here. The truth is it's about 50% ionic in character, if you will. So, but we're going to treat it though, just as if it's a carbanion, because if you think of it as reacting like a carbanion, it'll make your life a lot easier. All right. So we've got these Grignard reagents. They're strong base, strong nucleophile. So it reacts as if we have a carb anion, which is unusual. So, and we'll find out that this is kind of like lithium aluminum hydride. You know, we, we had in the last lesson, we had something that was the equivalent of having H minus, a hydride ion. And hydride, again, strong base, strong nucleophile. And we found out, yeah, I could attach a hydrogen right to one of these carbonyl carbons. Well, now we're going to be able to attach a carbon to one of those carbonyl carbons. And so in this case, uh, we've got formaldehyde here, a regular aldehyde here, and then a ketone here. So notice here the carbonyl carbon is bonded to two hydrogens. Here the carbonyl bon carbon is bonded to one hydrogen, one carbon. And with the ketone, the carbonyl carbon is bonded to two other carbons. So if you start with formaldehyde, if we add one more carbon bond here, and with methyl magnesium bromide, we're going to add a methyl group. So it turns out your Grignard can be, you know, you get a whole you know, host of options for what carbon chain you want to use for that. You want to use methyl, ethyl, a benzene ring, whatever, for the most part. Cool. So in this case, we're going to attach a new methyl group right to this carbonyl carbon. And so once that happens, it's going to kick these electrons up. In fact, let's draw that mechanism out. So the way this works, instead of having the carbon break off and form a carbanion, just like we saw with lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride, rather than having this carbon like break off and form that carbanion and then that carbanion coming and attacking, it all happens together. This carbon is going to come, break off and attack the oxygen. I'm sorry, the carbon, kicking these pi electrons up to the oxygen. And so we're going to attach a new methyl group right there. 
And so if we take a look at what this looks like, we've attached a new methyl group right there, and we've now got this single bond to oxygen, the new methyl group attached, and then the H3O plus is gonna protonate this oxygen to make it an alcohol. And so we've just made an alcohol, and that alcohol is just a hair more substituted than what we started with because we've added one bond to a carbon. And so if you start with formaldehyde again, you're going to get a primary alcohol. If you start with an aldehyde, we'll learn that we're going to end up with a secondary alcohol. And if you start with a ketone, you'll end up with a tertiary alcohol after reacting it with a Grignard reagent. So same kind of thing here. If we draw that bond in between carbon and magnesium, we could have that methyl group come and attach right there, kick the electrons, the pi electrons up to the oxygen. leaving us with a single bond to oxygen and a new, in this case, methyl group attached. And again, that oxygen is going to get protonated in an acid workup step in step two there. Cool. And there we got our secondary alcohol. And same thing here with our ketone. Attack the carbonyl carbon, kick the electrons up to the oxygen. Got a single bond of the oxygen, and again, we've attached a new methyl group. Make that look a little prettier. And then again, we'll do the acid workup step to protonate the alkoxide intermediate that formed. Cool, and now we formed a tertiary alcohol. And so now we've got a new way to synthesize alcohols, and if you want to make a primary alcohol, you've got to start with formaldehyde. If you want to make a secondary alcohol, you've got to choose the correct aldehyde, depending on what secondary alcohol you want to form. Same thing, if you want to make a tertiary alcohol, then you've got to start with the appropriate ketone, depending on what tertiary alcohol you want to form. This is a big point in synthesis. We've turned a certain carbon chain into a little bit bigger carbon chain, but again, this Grignard reagent, it could be a benzene ring. I could be attaching a whole benzene ring right here. So a phenyl magnesium halide or something like that. So uh, these Grignard reagents, super duper duper helpful, super duper important when it comes to synthesis. Now, couple things you need to know. We saw this with lithium aluminum hydride. So lithium aluminum hydride was such a strong base that it could not, was not compatible with protic solvents. Same thing is true about your Grignard. You can't mix your Grignard reagent with anything protic. Your solvent definitely can't be protic, but even your reactant can't be protic. So like, you know, I can't have like, you know, a longer molecule with like an alcohol sitting on the other side of my reactant. Otherwise, my Grignard re react as a base instead of a nucleophile. So these Grignard reagents, super strong bases, not compatible with protic solvents. So uh, typically when you see your Grignard, these reactions are carried out like in ether, like diethyl ether or in THF, tetrahydrofuran, a cyclic ether, both a protic solvents. Okay, so... We've learned how now to use these Grignard reagents. I want to talk just briefly about how you make a Grignard reagent. So, because again, that could be important from a synthesis perspective. Well, the way you make a corresponding Grignard reagent is you have to start with the corresponding alkyl halide. So in this case, I'd have to start with methyl bromide. And simply what you do is you add magnesium and this is one case where we show the aprotic solvent involved, you know, that we're going to use here. And we're either going to use ether or, once again, THF. Those are the two most common solvents by far. Ether is probably the more common, so but depending on the class and your professor, they might use, you know, preferably one over the other. The truth is either one works fine. So, and it turns out the, the magnesium is actually going to insert itself in between the carbon and the bromine. to get your Grignard reagent. So the mechanism of this is almost never covered. So specifically, I can't guarantee that, but I'm not gonna take the time to cover it because most of you aren't gonna need to know it. So the reaction of the Grignard itself with a ketone or aldehyde, that's totally on the table. You could be on the hook for that. So, but the formation of the Grignard itself, probably not the most important thing, but you start with an alkyl halide and you just simply add magnesium metal in ether. Turns out the mechanism does involve radicals and stuff like that. And a lot of professors and textbooks just choose to omit it from the curriculum. All right, so now we want to take a deeper look at a Grignard reagent's use from a synthesis perspective. So I want to come up with three different ways to make this lovely tertiary alcohol. So you can see that this carbon right here is a tertiary carbon, so that's a tertiary alcohol. And so you know that this can be formed from the Grignard addition to a ketone. Not an aldehyde, not formaldehyde, but Grignard addition to a ketone. 
And so in this case, you want to focus in on the carbon bonded to the oxygen because that is the carbon of the ketone, the carbonyl carbon of the ketone on the reactant side. And so we've got a few different options here. So, but that carbon right there, and I'll draw him in red so we can kind of keep track of him. But that carbon used to be double bonded to an oxygen. So, and in this case, you got to decide, okay, well, being part of a ketone, he was bonded to two other carbons. And you've got to decide, is it this carbon and this carbon, or this carbon and this carbon, or this carbon and this carbon? You get to pick two of the three, as it turns out. And so we're going to come up with three different ways to make this lovely structure, just by making you know, one of these three different carbon-carbon bonds. So the first one I'm going to consider is this guy right here. And so this carbon, again, used to be double bonded to that oxygen. So just envision that this carbon wasn't bonded here yet, and the carbonyl carbon was just double bonded to the oxygen. The hydrogen wasn't there. And so you'd end up with benzene ring on one side, so and then an ethyl group on the other side. And there'd be the ketone you'd start with. So then the other carbon that you're wanting to attach, he's the Grignard reagent. And in this case, that's just a methyl group. And so we'd simply use a methyl magnesium halide followed by an acid workup step. Cool. And that would create this lovely tertiary alcohol. So however, that's not the only option, right? So we, we chose to make this carbon-carbon bond to the what used to be the carbonyl carbon, but we could make this one or the other one as well. So let's make this one now. So in this case now, again, we'd start with carbon double bonded to an oxygen. But now, initially, he was not bonded to this benzene ring. He was only bonded to this methyl on one side and this ethyl on the other side. So a methyl on one side, an ethyl on the other side. And now it's the benzene ring that has to make the new carbon-carbon bond. So it'd be the benzene ring that's going to be our Grignard reagent. And so in this case, So we'd have phenyl magnesium bromide. Sometimes this is actually just abbreviated as PHMGBR, by the way. So but there's your phenyl magnesium bromide as your Grignard reagent. And again, followed by an acid workup step. And once again, that would also create this lovely tertiary alcohol. Now we've got one more option here. And once again, we've already considered forming this carbon-carbon bond, now this one. But now we've got to consider what if we were forming that carbon-carbon bond instead. So once again, we'd start with a carbonyl. So in this carbonyl now was initially bonded to a benzene ring and a methyl, but not to the ethyl. So to the benzene ring and a methyl, but not to the ethyl. And so here we would use ethyl magnesium bromide. Again, sometimes that might just be abbreviated as ethyl MgBr. So, and then followed by our acid workup step. And once again, that's going to create the same tertiary alcohol. And so, cool, just want to kind of give you an idea of how you want to look at alcohols from the perspective of how do you synthesize them from a corresponding either ketone or aldehyde or formaldehyde and the appropriate Grignard reagent. And the key is you can make, in principle, any of the carbon-carbon bonds to the carbon of the alcohol by using the appropriate ketone, aldehyde or formaldehyde and the appropriate Grignard reagent. Cool. Once again, super, super, super important from a synthesis perspective for all of second semester organic chemistry. You'll see these used time and time again throughout the rest of this semester. So you're going to want to really understand these well. And if you have found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? A couple of the more important things you can do to help support the channel. If you've got questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you're looking for the study guide, if you're looking for practice problems, so check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.